Hello, this is Nigel Forster, landscape photographer with Photo Training for You. We're in the fantastic surroundings of Clantony Priory, a scheduled ancient monument uh, in the middle of the Black Mountains. Um, hay on Wye is about uh, take eight, mile, eight, ten miles down the road, and we're about the same distance from Abergavenny. It's a stunning spot, so if, if you ever get the chance to visit here, please do. Um, we're going to use this as a base for practicing composition. Um, it's quite a nice contrast, buildings in the landscape, um, contrast between sharp edges, particularly when you've got such a fantastic historic building such as this, with loads of character, but also the soft surroundings of the, the natural landscape. So we're going to use our basis. Um, um, what we, I suppose, normally refer to as the uh, 10 guidelines for, for composition. As you can tell, tell the wind is still uh, a little bit blustery, so if my voice is a little bit uh, vague in places, you have to, um, you have to bear with us. Um, so we're going to use the building as a basis. We're going to take some close-ups. Um, we're going to be looking at things like framing, using foreground, using lead-in lines. But we're also going to be taking in a couple of distant, view distant views as well. So we're going to be starting off around the building and then work our way out. So um, let's see what we can come up with. OK, um, we found our first spot. I'm going to be, you notice I'm holding the camera. Um, it's a bright sunny day. And in fact, in some ways, um, it's a, quite a perfect day to do this kind of shooting. Nice, bright, contrasty sky against the, against the building. Um, nice shadows, light and shadow effects. So um, quite like this kind of day for this kind of photography. In part, I'm going to be hand-holding uh, rather than using the tripod all the time. Um, I've got plenty of light, um, and it does give me more, more flexibility. Um, I generally like to handheld if I want to work at speed, um, if I've got enough light around. Um, so um, um, I might use the tripod on a couple of shots as well. Um, right, our first spot, um, we're going to be looking at framing. Um, we've got the sun coming from the side, um, quite a prominent view of the, uh, of the priory behind me. So what I'm going to be doing is to try and use these tree branches. Now, as you can tell, they're blustering around like crazy. Leaves, well, I was hoping for a bit of autumn colour, but uh, it looks like well, they're one of those species which seem to be turning brown and dropping off. But um, we're going to get some nice sort of uh, just bare branches anyway. Now I'm going to be fine going, looking for a couple of viewpoints to try and get a, get a, a, to use those branches to form an effective frame around the building. So um, I'm going to try a few different spots. I'm going to get the low down because I want to get more clearance between the building and uh, the branches at the moment. I'm also using a wide, en wide angle lens. We've got quite a lot to get in. Um, so um, let's see what we can come up with. Right, I'm uh, shooting at the moment at 160th of a second at f13. Um, I'm um, deliberately shooting a pretty fast shutter speed because these branches are moving really quickly and I really don't, don't want slightly blurred branches in the, um, in, in the picture. Um, if you want blur, by the way, uh, generally best to make it obviously deliberate blur. If you make something slightly blurred, generally it looks like a mistake. Um, so I found a point here which I've got some dark shadows in the foreground which work quite well because I don't particularly want all this foreground lit. Um, I've, um, I've got the building at a good angle, good con uh, contrast of light and shade. And I've got the, uh, the branches framing it pretty much how I want it. So this is probably my best spot. Except the sun's gone in, so I'm going to be delaying it for a moment. Um, I'm also in post-processing, would probably think about converting this, this one to black and white as well. Because the colours here don't, don't strike me. It's, uh, it's greys, it's browns, green of the grass. Um, there's not much colour in the tree, but it really is more about tonal variation. So it's the kind of shot I think to myself, actually this might work quite well in black and white. Um, with black and white, do not use the black and white setting in the camera. It will produce a processed JPEG. Shoot in, shoot in raw um, and then do the rest of it in post-processing. Um, the rule is, do not generally don't restrict yourself by using a camera setting in camera that you don't need and can't reverse. Um, give, shoot in um, a basic uh, unprocessed JPEG and do what post-processing you can 
in, in um, uh, afterwards. So the sun's come back out, I'm going to have another go. I'm also, and I've got really close to the ground here, I'm keeping the uh, horizon line very low. I don't want a large expanse of grass. I'm also, because even at 16 millimetres, this is a bit tight. And tell you what, the reason why it's so tight, I've got my 2470 lens on here, only just realised. So uh, instead of, I was going to do a panoramic photo merge just to widen it a little bit. But instead, I'm going to change my lens. <laughs> okay, I'm now re-equipped with, uh, oh, that better it gives me. Actually, 24 wasn't far off what I want, so I wasn't too far off away with the other lens anyway. Sun's coming out again. Let's give it a bit of, uh, give it a bit of extra exposure. 125th at f13. Look at, quick look at the histogram. Always a good tip look at, to look at your histogram. Shows, histogram shows a, uh, a good spread of um, across the tonal range. Let me take that back on. Um, as you can see, so uh, I've got no burnt out highlights and anything faintly, slightly in the sky I can recover. I've got some dark shadow areas, but I'm happy with the dark shadow areas and anything I want I can slightly enhance with post-processing anyway. So uh, I think I'm, I'm broadly happy with that. So quite a good example of framing where you've got um, a, 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 almost a, a mix of the, the hard lines of a historic building against the, the, the softer lines of a tree which frames it. it tends to work quite well. So uh, we'll see what we come up with when we go back to, uh, go back to the computer. So let's find another spot. Okay, this is our second spot. I've uh, chosen this because I quite like the way that the, uh, the sun has caught this foreground feature. So just an example of, uh, of using foreground to draw the eye to the image. We've also got the main building you can see through the arch there and the backdrop as well. So we've got a bit of a, a sort of frame within a frame there. So um, I've, uh, I've put the camera there using portrait format because the arrangement of the elements the verticality of the structure, but also um, the uh, relationship I wanted between the foreground and the structure works best in portrait format, in my view, not, not landscape format. So uh, I'm going to be taking a, uh, another picture here. Um, fine. I'm going to give it another half stop, um, probably another stop, actually. Um, I took my exposure from, uh, from the sky because this is very bright, but I could probably do with a bit more detail coming out in the, um, in the structure itself, so I might blend this one. Right. I've uh, actually ended up using quite a few images. There was a huge contrast there between the, uh, the shadow areas and, uh, and the, uh, the foreground and the sky, uh, more so than I expected. Now, I'm not going to be able to blend this manually. Um, the structures, you have, I haven't got a plain, nice, simple horizon I can use to blend sky and foreground. So if I want to have a go at blending this, I would have to use HDR. HDR is uh, a way that you can uh, take several images uh, at opposite ends of the uh, exposure or dynamic range scale and blend them to expose for highlights and also for shadows. And the only way I could actually get detail in all of this is to, um, uh, is to uh, blend several images. There are several stops apart between those shadows and highlights. Um, but um, primarily, the purpose of using this spot was to uh, show that relationship between foreground and background. I did originally uh, have the uh, tripod a little bit further across um, let's see what I've got here. Yeah, um, a little bit further to the right. I'll also do, do that and move it now and show you. I didn't like the fact that there was a direct line between the foreground and the tower. I wanted um, a bit of an oblique diagonal um, uh, composition across the image because it tends to give the image more. Of an the, the viewer more of an opportunity to move through the image rather than directing one to the other. So I'll, I'll take the other image as a comparison. I'm 
I'm not bothering the full range there. I'm just taking a couple because it's only a comparison anyway. But it basically puts the foreground feature directly in the center of the frame, which in my opinion doesn't work as well. Okay, I've chosen this because I quite like the, uh, the way that uh, the light and shadow of the, uh, the, the sunlight passing through the columns um, helps create a, a, a really strong pattern of light and shade. And it's also framed quite, uh, quite, quite neatly through the, uh, the, uh, the, dark, the arch doorway as well. So I think that makes quite an effective composition. Again, like we had earlier, it might look quite effective in black and white too, so I'd certainly give that a try. We're certainly going to have a contrast issue again here, so I'm going to be taking, uh, taking a series. I'll just bracket three. Okay. Taking my reading from the light grass, because to me that uh, lit grass approximates most closely to 18% grey. Having looked at the first image I took, I'm not far off. But what that's done is overexpose the sky, so I've got one under for the sky and one over for the shadows. So I um, should be able to, uh, to use those. Um, I'll do a little bit more um, exploring with the camera, see if I can get a better composition on this. Up. My, first, my first thoughts are, are actually probably not. Although, if I step back a little bit, at the moment I've got quite a, um, a large sky space. There. If I step back a little bit and zoom in a shade, what I'll do is to increase the size of the background in relation to the arch. So I'll have less of the surroundings and more of the, um, the, 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 the foreground feature, the, uh, the, the columns and the building. Don't forget when you're, uh, so I'm going to be zooming in. Don't forget that for every, every time you zoom in to a longer focal length, you're foreshortening more. So you're closing the relationship between the background and the foreground. The wider you go, the more you're expanding that relationship between background and foreground. So it's very important to experiment, not always to go with a wide angle. Very easy to go with a wide angle and turn your Himalayan mountains into, into molehills. Um, and the whole picture, picture becomes about the foreground. But don't forget, every time you zoom in or zoom out, then you do change that relationship. It's always worthwhile to experiment. I'm going to drop the tripod down a shade because I think the top of that tower is too close to my mind, to the top of the sky. And zo I've zoomed into 35 millimeter here. I'm going to uh, do the same, three stop bracket. That'll be fine. Okay, I actually think probably looking at that, I'm, I'm happier with that composition. I think it crops more tightly. Um, just had a couple of people passing through the image there. It's just something, this is a public place. There are people crossing all over the place. So obviously we've got to be mindful of that in shooting. And I certainly wouldn't, uh, just a general tip, when you are shooting pictures with people, in them, if they're recognizable faces, if you're going to use anything with the pictures, you will need a model release for them. So I tend to, unless I'm approached them, unless they are deliberately in the picture, then I will tend to wait until they've passed through. All right, for this one, I've only moved a couple of yards. So I'm actually going to be taking the camera off the tripod because uh, um, I, I knew need to, get, need to get a very precise precision here, which I think I've probably got more flexibility with uh, just uh, doing this manually. Handheld. I've just seen something here where you've got a, a uh, the sun glinting through, uh, casting some very bright highlights. Now this one of those images it might work, it, uh, it might not work particularly well, but it might be quite striking. Now I want to get the star, the sun to have a starburst effect, so I'm going to be shooting at a very small aperture, the smallest aperture I can, because that increases the starburst effect. Take my exposure from the sky. So I'm reading 60 to the left 22, and we'll probably have to bring that down a shade for the sun. Let's see how this goes. No, I'm not happy with the starburst and the sun at the moment. I'm going to give it another go. By the way, Canon uses amongst you. 
your lenses are much, much better at doing the starburst thing than Nikon users are, than uh, Nikon lenses are. So you can do quite a lot with these. Nikon never seemed to work as well. And you know what, after doing all these, I, really, I don't really like these. Seemed like a good idea at the time. I'm just not happy with the shape. The essential idea of the starburst sun coming straight through and casting this really bright light against a dark background can work really well. Um, I'm just not sure that the shapes I've got here, the forms I've got, that arch, and particularly that structure there, and what I've got, essentially I'm turning into effectively a light and dark, black and white shot, work particularly well. So likelihood as I get this back and, and probably <laughs> and probably look at them and think, well, one of those, some of those things you try and they don't really work out. I've done my best, I'm gonna move on to a different spot. Right. It's a little bit of a variation of what we had earlier. We've got a couple of people in the shot actually, so uh, they might move on. Um, where we've got the light and shadow, but we've got a much stronger context than we had before. Um, because we've got a clear view of the, uh, the surrounding mountains. So what we're doing is effectively using the arches are to the left-hand side as a stop, a frame, effectively a side frame. And the shadow, light and shadow detail at the bottom will be doing the same at the bottom. So in this, I'm going to make sure that the bottom of the frame has used that edge, the, heart, the dark edge to the tower, but also the dark edge to the shadow. Always works much better than having the light at the bottom. Because if you have light at the bottom of the frame, it tends to, the eyes tends to stop there. So I will always, if I've got a shadow, tend to have that at the bottom of the frame and then, work, and then, uh, and then use that as, as my starting point. So just to, uh, I'm going to skip, miss this first one out. I'm finding the second one slightly easier to do. Um, the shadow is, ra is raising a little bit because it's on the bank. So in fact, I'm getting a little bit of lightness in here whether I want it. So what I'll probably do is to do a little bit of cloning work on the bottom of this in post-processing. So let's take a, take a shot. Remember to change the exposure because I'm no longer, so I've gotten, I'm reading off the graph. I'm reading at, at 60th of F13. I'll take a couple, I'll take one either side as well. Yeah, my first one was fine. So my 60 to 13 is, is right. So exposing for the grass, bright grass tends to, tends to work well. Um, let's see, shall I? No, I'm happy with that. Also taking one which takes in more of the, um, the light area. I'm going to bracket this sli slightly more wider because I've got, I've, got the sun in the, I've got the lit cloud in the corner in the image. So I'm going to go a little bit. And this one I'm placing far more emphasis on this broad sweep here of this lit area, which uh, places the background into context. I'd say with a lot of these, I'm going to try them in black and white and see how they work out. Can I do anything with the lip wall? Probably worth a try. Makes uh, an effective lead into the into the shot. Uh, Exposure-wise, this is going to be a nightmare. I'll take my reading off the wall, hundredth at f13, and I have got a really bright part of the image. So let's see. I'm going to be taking two here and probably potentially merging them. So let me take my focusing point off the grass, mid-range grass. I'm also taking my reading off that. I'm going to be changing to manual exposure, a manual, meter, uh, manual focusing by, I beg your pardon. And then that way my focusing won't change off that point. Right.